you know, people still talk about, I know why the cage birds sing. Mm -hmm. A movie was made. Yeah. It's taught in classrooms. I mean, you can rarely talk, you, it's, you can rarely t talk to anybody over in the world and mention Dr. Angelo and the first thing out of the mouth, I know why the cage birds sing. Well, that's why is that bird still singing though? Well, <laughs> Maya Angelou is a literary legend, full stop. Most of us are introduced to her in middle school or perhaps high school, often through her first autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. The title of this autobiography comes from Paul Lawrence Dunbar's poem named Sympathy. Here's a clip of Maya Angelou reciting Dunbar's poem. That's a poem written by Paul Lawrence Dunbar in 1892. The poem is called Sympathy, and uh, I'd like to say this poem to you. Oh, yes. For you and for your, your viewers. I know what the caged bird feels on me when the sun is bright on the upland slopes, when the wind blows soft through the springing grass and the river floats like a sheet of glass. When the first bird sings, and the first bud opes, and the faint perfume from its chalice steals, I know what the caged bird feels. I know why the caged bird beats its wing till its blood is red on the cruel bars. For it must fly back to its perch and cling when it fain would be on the bow a swing. And the blood still throbs in the old, old scars. It pulses again with a keener sting. I know why it beats its wing. And I know why the caged bird sings. Ah, me. When its wings are bruised and its bosom sore, it beats its bars and would be free. It's not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that it sends from its heart's deep core, but a plea that upward to heaven it flings. I know why the case breaks. Marguerite Annie Johnson, also known as Maya Angelou, was born in 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri. When her parents divorced, she and her brother were sent to live with their grandmother in Stamps, Arkansas. Eventually, she returned to live with her mother in St. Louis, where, horrifically, Angelou was raped as a young girl by her stepfather. Although he was convicted of the crime, he served only one day in jail, but was later murdered, probably by Angelou's uncles. At this point, the young girl became mute, believing, as Angelou later stated, quote, I thought my voice killed him. I killed that man because I told his name. And then I thought I would never speak again because my voice, it would kill anyone. According to a later biographer, it was during this period of silence when Angelou developed her, quote, extraordinary memory, her love for books and literature, and her ability to listen and observed the world around her. During her teenage years, Angelou lived with her mother in California, where she became the first black woman to look, work as a streetcar conductor in San Francisco. In Cage Birds, she writes, quote, I clanged and cleared my way down Market Street with its honky-tonk homes for homeless sailors, past the quiet retreat of Golden Gate Park and along closed, undwelled-in-looking dwellings of the Sunset District. She gave birth to her son at the age of 16 and then needed to take various jobs to support him. In a later interview, Angelou once said, My greatest blessing has been the birth of my son. Her son was an author like his mother, writing a number of books, including Standing at the Scratch Line. 
When he was asked at one time what it was like growing up in the shadow of his beloved parent, he replied, quote, I didn't. I grew up in her light. Sometimes I wasn't worthy of it, but it's always been an experience that expanded me. Eventually, Angelou moved to New York City where she was affiliated with the Harlem Writers Guild and worked for Martin Luther King Jr.'s civil rights organization. Angelou published her first autobiography, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, to critical acclaim. She went on to be a very prolific writer and also performed in films and on Broadway. In addition to her autobiographical writing, Angelou became celebrated for her poetry. Her work such as Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water For I Die, which was published in 1973 and was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize, and And Still I Rise, which appeared in 1986, explore personal agency, the strength of women, spirituality, and even romantic love. She also wrote children's books, including the Maya's World Series and cookbooks that combine personal recipes with reflections on her relationships to food and cooking. Angelou was a gifted orator and a lecturer and served as the Reynolds Professor of American Studies at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. I mean, can you imagine taking a creative writing course with Maya Angelou? Over her lifetime, she received 50 honorary degrees, the National Medal of Arts, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor in the United States. Angelou died on May 28, 2014 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And in 2022, her image appeared on the first coin in the U.S. Mint's American Women Quarters program. What follows is a clip of Maya Angelou reciting one of her classic poems, And Still I Rise. What a treat it is to be able to listen to her and watch her as she recites her own poetry. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings, and said, morning, how are you? Fine, thanks, in you? It's amazing, wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit, despite it all, black and white, Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, vowed a celibate, we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. 
leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into a daybreak miraculously clear. I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so naturally, there I go rising.